is Tariq Talk. Your host, Tariq Mendez, takes you on a journey with guests from all around the world. Broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is Tariq Talk. All right. Hey, guys. Today, I'm with Shakira Terrain. How are you, Shakira? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. So excited we got to link up and do this podcast episode today. I know. Long overdue. I know, right? <laughs> and we're not just... We're not with the waka, waka, waka. <laughs> hey, 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 Shakira. We're with the Shakira <laughs> Terrain. Yes, And baby. that's on period. <laughs> um, so do you want to start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yes. My name is Shakira Terrain. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Shout Brooklyn. out to Brooklyn. Um, right now, I'm an entrepreneur. I have three businesses. One, which is my first business that I ever started, was Terrain Republic. So Terrain Republic is more my creative directing and my producing for editorial or commercial products for people or like clients in the fashion, beauty, lifestyle, and luxury industry. Oh, well, that's amazing. And how did you get into that? Because that's so... Diverse. Ooh, long story. Um, so when I was a freshman in high school, mm-hmm. um, I guess some scouters came to our school. Mm-hmm. I went to Bayard Rustin High oh, School, wow, by okay. the way, and I was just sitting there drawing uh-huh. anime. Oh wow! And Yasha, yeah. And a guy stood over me while I'm drawing, yeah. and you know, you you like. Can I help you? Oh, uh, can I help you? He's like, that's really good. Long story short, he just put the card down. He was like, um, come to an interview. We're interviewing new um, for an internship program. I didn't know what it was. He said, just come through. And I'm like, nine yeah. times out of ten, when you hear that as a yeah. child, you're like, wait, is he a stalker? <laughs> no, but I told my mom. Yeah. My mom couldn't make it, so my grandmother took me. Oh, that's very sweet. And the next thing we know, the address led us to Mark Echo Enterprises. No way. Yes. So wow. I went in the door. There's Mark Echo. Um, one of my mentors, which was Damon Butler. Oh, wow. Um, Nell Daniels. And they were the ones running the C program, which is stand for Sweat Equity Enterprises. Oh, wow. So it was a nonprofit organization for kids in high school, teaching them how products are made. That's amazing. So I, I got in, and I learned so much there. Um, how the products are made, the presentation. They schooled us on everything. I work with a lot of companies in Sweat, equ- sweat Equity Enterprises, um, working with brands like Radio Shack. Um, my, one of my favorite brands that I work with was Nissan. Oh, wow. My mentor name is Brian Thompson. Shout, Shout out, out Brian, Brian Thompson. Thompson. Yeah. <laughs> so that was honestly the moment to where I felt like oh my god I could really do this full time and then afterwards I was like you know what I've never been the type to work for someone else Mm -hmm. so I was like you know what with all my knowledge and I'm learning from these big successful people I met the CEO from Sketches there I work with Frog Design being in that program Um, Best Buy Um, Even people from Victoria's Secret, they used to give us a concept, tell us this is what we want. Then we used to have to use our imagination and draw out products for these specific companies, telling us what they wanted. And they trust us to be able to design it. And remember, we're in front of marketing execs, vice presidents of these different corporations, because that's how it really is. When they tell you to design something, you have to sell it. Yeah. Why this product's going to make money. They put us through the ringer, but that's why I, I got so comfortable talking to people. And, you know, sometimes people get intimidated by people that have yeah. money. I was like, duh, 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 duh. I learned so much in that program, and that's where I got my head start being in design. That's amazing. And do you feel like growing up in Brooklyn, because, I, you know, I was born in Brazil, you know that, but I always admire people in New York because I always feel like growing up in New York, you have access to so many things and you grow up at, I think, much faster than any other country. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like kids here are so much more smarter than anywhere else I've been. Like, they're just so 
they adapt things faster. You know, they're like street smart and book smart. Do you mm-hmm. think being from Brooklyn kind of like guided you almost to be in that spot at that like exact perfect time? Honestly, yes. Yeah. Because Brooklyn, New York, like I was born, you know, I'm Aquarius, and my birthday is February the 1st, 1991. And being growing up in Brooklyn, it was so diverse. Everybody played together. Mm-hmm. It didn't matter what race, yeah, what creed, what religion. Everyone was just one big happy family. Yeah. If you had problems with one person on the block, you had problems with well, everybody, everybody the on block. the block. So being being around people and individuals of different nationalities and cultures it really teaches you a lot that you're Mm -hmm. able to have that dialogue and be like, oh, I didn't know this. Oh, I didn't know that. And you may not agree, but you still, we still have that respect. Mm -hmm. And one thing about me, um, you know, a little black girl from New York, I love Asian culture Mm -hmm. because I used to watch Asian movies Mm -hmm. with my grandma from... A uh, thirty-six chamber of death with Gordon Liu. Oh, wow. uh, I grew up with Jet Li, Donnie Yen. Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> yes. And uh, I used to watch anime with my aunt. Shout out Shamika King. Oh, shout out. <laughs> yeah, and we used to watch. Um, was it Adult Swim? That's where all. Oh the yeah. Network. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> That's where I used to watch. Oh, yeah. Jack, like even after school at three o'clock. Um, was it called Toonami? Sailor oh, wow. Moon used to come on. Um, the Dragon Ball Z reboot. Oh my God, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> that was like really my go-to. Yeah, exactly. So. I almost felt embarrassed because, you know, me being a black girl is like, oh, you know, I wasn't black enough Mm -hmm. growing up. And that that used to bother me with my Mm -hmm. self-identity a little bit because I'm like, oh, you know, they always they see you as one way. Yeah. But when you're the opposite, they're like, why you act white? Yeah. That used to bother me. This being an art in general mm-hmm. and drawing and stuff like that. Wow. I was very, I was, I felt so different. Yeah. And that's why I was so quiet. I didn't like to talk to anyone. Cause I feel like they didn't understand me. Mm-hmm. Being grown up in Brooklyn, being around different cultures really helped me grow up mm-hmm. in a sense. Being able to have conversations with other mature individuals. Yeah. And learning about different things. So I think, yes, growing up in Brooklyn really did help me develop a sem- self-identity. Mm-hmm. You know, most people don't have that, but I'm grateful to have that. That's amazing. Well, two things. Um, I think that the fact that you like like anime so from such an early age, and then yes. that helped you get the, mm-hmm. the opportunity with Mark Echo. But then also it reminded me of the story. We were talking about this before we started <laughs> the podcast. Uh, that girl from Danity K, you know? <laughs> Remember yes. Don Richards? Yes, I remember. I was that. watching a, a a little like doc about them, a documentary, and then she was saying how she was drawing anime, and it was like all girls, and it was called Danity Kane, and then mm-hmm. like you know the record label saw it and then said, "Oh my gosh, this like we want this to be the name of the group." Yeah. But that's so funny that you say that because it's always the people that I think are so futuristic and you know business savvy that are always the ones like from an early age that you know, are different, but then, you know, that helps them in the long run almost. You yeah, know? most, yeah, most definitely. Like, I love, I, I love anime. I still watch anime to this day. You know, a lot of people think that, oh, you know, anime is not a cartoon, no. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> they have adult dialogue yeah. in there. And, um, and just the stories, like, sometimes you, sometimes it's really weird that you could relate your life to an anime character, because they go in deep. Mm-hmm. And one thing about anime, they don't discriminate against talking about real life issues that happen today. They just do it in an animated form, mm-hmm. you know. Um, that was my safe place, you know. And drawing, anytime I was sad, depressed, I always went straight to drawing. Oh, wow, me too. Because it allowed me to create this little bubble, you know. No one's not judging me. I'd be in a room by myself drawing for hours. Um, especially after my uncle died when I was in, I believe, I think middle school, that's where I started to draw a wow. lot. And do you still have like some of the drawings 
from that age? <laughs> my grandmother do. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. She, oh, my grandma, when I, every time I drew a picture and I dated, she has like this No, this like a binder? Folk, oh, yeah. wow. And she has all my drawings in it. So, shout out to my grandma. Shout out, grandma. <laughs> 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 yeah. She, uh, uh, one thing, then another thing, Um, my grandma, she really taught me to learn how to keep memories Mm -hmm. you know it didn't matter whether it was a diploma yeah if you got certified in anything graduation it all went to her Mm -hmm. like (laughs) is she a scorpio my mom's my grandmother my grandma's what october 6th Oh, I don't know if that's a Scorpio, but I do that word. Like, that's like a Scorpio thing to, yeah. like, keep track of memories and everything. So, um, yeah, so she always collect everything. That's amazing. And my mom does the same thing, Oh, that's too, even better. Because I'm very irresponsible when yeah. it comes to, like, birth certificates <laughs> and stuff. So my mom, yeah, she, my mom got that from her mom. It's just like, listen, like, here, take all my paperwork. <laughs> and I'll just ask you for it later. That's so funny. That's a very, like, millennial thing. Mm-hmm. Right? It'd be like, you know, you ask your parents, oh, I, I need my social security card. Like, what do you need it for? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Even though you're supposed to have it and be an adult about it. That's like the, the if you need anything. Yeah. The grandma mama got it you know what's so funny because like in brazil like we put all of our unless you have a safe like for the really important stuff but like mm-hmm. diploma like birth certificate whatever we put it like underneath our bed did you ever hear about that <laughs> 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 yeah and i had like jamaican yeah. friends that do that too like i remember we were like um like we were talking about this and they said oh we just like keep it like in our parents bedroom but underneath the mattress so yeah. they lift it up so every you time you want it you put the mattress on your head and you start mm-hmm. digging through it actually see you know so funny that you said that i seen the um you know like now with tiktok and yeah. um, instagram they do um a lot of like this spoofs yeah that you could relate to when you yeah, were a child yeah. i seen a video with um the parent they said parents be like yeah. at the bottom what you leave for yeah, here <laughs> <laughs> and they have all the paperwork yeah. and the documents in the between the mattresses yeah so that's why i was like yeah i I asked for ask my mom oh my gosh that's <laughs> so funny that's amazing like to go back and treasure the mem- those memories do you ever like go back and look at your previous drawings yes yeah. i do uh, just recently because sometimes you know when you di- when you when you create something and you date it mm-hmm. it, w- once you date it and you put that stamp on it it's like a going back into the future yeah. all these memories and these yeah. you remember how you felt, felt yeah. when you when you drew that yeah. and that's why a lot of people I feel like take artists for granted mm-hmm. sometimes they just be like oh I can do that yeah. you know I feel like some people really don't appreciate artists or yeah. artistry period yeah and you have to think about why did that person paint that sketch that drawer because they probably was going through something at that time yeah. it's maybe not be powerful to you but to them it has a, com- a yeah. whole story and people don't get that that's at amazing. all that's so funny you said that because i had a previous guest shout out tris mccall <laughs> and he was here um and he was talking about that because i said oh mm-hmm. like how like your interest in art and he was like oh you know how do people get in art why did they do the, what they do and then all of that and he says sometimes art gets overlooked and i think that's beautiful they said that because that is true you know people think oh i could do that or you know mm-hmm. they don't understand how much emotion and time and discipline and hard work goes into a piece of work and they don't and you know even with today um uh, and not saying there's nothing wrong with it like if you want to be a writer and and you know work behind the scenes Mm -hmm. even people that work behind the scenes don't get the credit that they deserve Mm -hmm. you know with certain things because like i said if you don't know certain contracts and stuff like that you're not familiarized with percentages and and i recently i just learned about what's it called um something property where if you help someone create something and you don't sign that, I guess, copyright form. I forget uh, the you, word, but it's, it's you, like you, P. It's like starts with a P, yes, right? Yes, yes. And I'm learning that now. Like, there's so many different contracts yeah. out there that you have to research. And it's just, like, no different like me. When I produce photo shoots, mm-hmm. some contracts you forget. Yeah. Like, even a property release form. Yeah. If there's one tiny logo in the background, you can get sued for no, that. No, absolutely. Yeah. Especially it could be so small. Yeah. It don't matter how small, how big. You you have to 
That's I'm so sorry. funny you say that because right <laughs> right before when we sat down, right before we started recording, there was a beverage here with the logo, and I said, "Oh, do you mind if I take this out because yes. you know I don't want to take a chance?" But yeah, I mean, you have to be so smart and you have to be look out for yourself because you know there's so you many so many sharks out there as we previously discussed off camera. <laughs> um, but yeah, you got you like you got to know your business. And what's an advice you would tell your younger self, like? with everything that you know now like what's something that if you could like, you run to baby Shakira and be like girl you need like please Ooh. google this invest in this think about this dance are you put me on the spot <laughs> <laughs> no um honestly what I would tell my younger self and you know what's you know what's so sad I feel like with people you spend your adult life running from stuff in your childhood mm -hmm. So I even have to tell myself this today. Mm -hmm. Stop and don't take things so personal. Yeah. When I was younger, oh my God, I took <laughs> everything personal. Oh don't disrespect gosh. me. Me too. And this, that, and the third. But then you end up realizing that silence is the biggest you won the battle yeah. ever. Like I because I feel like all that energy you put in yelling and screaming yeah. and it's like damn I just wasted so much energy what did I get out of that nothing because nothing. Yeah. time is the biggest luxury yes. I think so like when you can get to be I mean you know the happiest people in the most like you know how do you say like conquered people in the world the most carefree people like you know if they don't mm -hmm. agree with you they're like okay like nowadays somebody tells me like the sky is green I'm like yeah you're right great have a great day you know, but the younger me, like if it was younger <laughs> us, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hold my phone really quick. Let me handle this. In you high know? school, I was known as the was a clapback queen. Uh oh. Because I didn't put energy into an argument. Yeah. Now you put your hands on me. That's something different. That's a different story. It's but that. I used to annihilate people yeah. with just my words and my presence. It didn't matter who you was, God, girl, anybody. Yeah. I was like anyone could get it. <laughs> but now it's like. Like, going back to what we was talking about of contracts and, you know, artists and stuff like that. If people critique your work, don't take it so personal because it's it's not it's not personal. Mm -hmm. Like, these people have a job, you know. I would say that would be the biggest thing. Because when you start to take things so personal, it's very stressful. Mm -hmm. And like we were talking about, that's where, like, you have to protect your mental health. If it's not negative, don't yeah. feed into it, yeah. you know? So just leave it alone. Mm -hmm. No, I totally agree with you. That's said. what I would say to my younger self. Oh, that's beautiful. So going back to, because actually that was going to be my next question, like mental health. If you want to elaborate a little bit on that, like, what do you do for yourself um, to take care of your mental health so you don't have, like, a mental breakdown and get overworked? To be honest with you, and this may sound so cheesy. <laughs> why, why? I have mother and daughter days with oh my, my mom. Oh my gosh, that's not cheesy at all. That's amazing. Um, My mom, honestly, is one of my biggest inspirations. I don't want to, I don't want to cry, no, but, you, can't. you know, my mom is like one of the strongest women I know. And she teaches me to be strong mm -hmm. not be so available to other people mm -hmm. because there's a lot of people in this world that don't deserve you mm -hmm. and as a child normally when your parents say something you be like whatever whatever yeah but it's not until you get older they're like oh my god you they were right yeah, exactly <laughs> till you really understand yeah. that everything that my mom said like she in fruition now everything yeah. came to be and now I listen to her more now yeah, than too. I did when I was younger me too. because you have to kill people with kindness because yeah. people smile in your face you but they're know. thinking so many ways to hurt you Yeah, and that's why I tell people like stop calling everyone a friend Yeah, this is how I protect my mental health mm -hmm. you know when someone makes me mad I call my mom. Mm -hmm. My mom be like, let it go. <laughs> no, I'm so serious. Is it like, is it, remember that scene in the background? <laughs> She's like, mom, I'm about to go home because I <laughs> Yes. 
that's how i that's how i look on my mom i was like i swear to god please no because you 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 ever see those cartoons back in the day where you had the angel yeah and you had the little devil on your shoulders yeah. like my little devil be like yo you better go for it yeah Do go it. for <laughs> it annihilate them like but my mom my mom be like you know my mom is like half angel had that she yeah. said listen shakira just keep being your bad self mm-hmm. like you know f f what other people think you know because if you don't have haters if no one's talking about you yeah. you're not important you ain't doing nothing <laughs> right no it isn't true like don't let anybody deter you from your path you yes know? and i love the relationship i have with my mom and that's what keeps me strong mm-hmm. because i look at especially the school that i went to Everyone used to comment me on my relationship with my mom. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't have their mom, dad, mm-hmm. or neither yeah. parent to guide them. So I never try to take that for granted. Yeah. And I tell people, you need to understand the meaning of life. The meaning of life is to create a family and pass on what your grandparents and your mom has taught you to your children. You never want your children to want for anything. Yeah. That's why you go through things as a child and older to overcome it. That's so true. So when your child is born, you can give them the heads up. Yeah. But if you don't go through things, you don't become like we talked about earlier, culture, mm. learning about other cultures. How is your child going to respect other cultures yeah. when you're not interacting, you know, and stuff like that? That's why if I had children, I would want them to ad- adapt in different areas. Mm-hmm different type of people all over the world i want to travel with my child so they can know sky is the limit you know i want to expose them to different cultures and you know travel with me different countries so anytime they're feeling sad they'll be like you know what i want to go to dubai Mm -hmm. i want to go to tokyo i want to go here i don't want i want to go there that's funny (laughs) you say that because i follow um I forget her name, but she does like traveling and she's always joking. She's like, oh, you know, therapy is, is this much money, but so is a round trip ticket to like Bali, mm-hmm. you know, for like a good mental health day. But it is true. I love that. And I love that how, because I mean, I have a good relationship with my mom too. And I, call, and I call her like all the time, good and bad. Mm-hmm. But I feel like a lot of people, you know, I think it's so weird when people don't. Like when some of my friends, it's like they're so standoffish or they're like, whatever, mom. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, um, it's weird how certain generations think it's like cool to treat your parents with respect and kindness and some people don't think it it's cool you know what i mean yeah i feel like i don't know i don't know (laughs) i I mean you you know what's so funny to continue to what you were saying that's another reason why i love being around different people Mm -hmm. and i'm not talking about just race or religion Mm -hmm. i'm talking about people's lifestyle could be different you know i have friends that don't have much I have friends that have a lot. Mm. And you know what's so funny? My friends that don't have as much, I inspired them to want more. Mm-hmm. And my friends that do have a lot, I teach them to humble yeah. yourself to all the better, way down. Heart, yeah. And so I'm like that balance, mm-hmm. you know? Because think of it like this. You could be dead and gone tomorrow. And what do you want to be remembered for? Yeah. No, I totally agree. Not even that. Like, if you, <laughs> like if I go through something tough or, you know, like, I get angry for a second. I think, you know, right as we speak, there's people, like, packing, like, all their kids, strapping them to their body, trying to cross the ocean for a better life. Like, as we speak. And yeah. they're probably, unfortunately, drowning, you know? Yeah. God bless them. So, it's like, it really... It really could be worse. Like, that's, especially yeah. growing up in Brazil, like, you see a lot of craziness, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. we think, like, oh, my gosh, like, this is the worst thing to have. No, like, you're lucky to have a first world problem. It could be much worse, you know? Exactly. And, you know, let's keep it real. Us Americans, we're spoiled. Mm-hmm. We have all the resources in the world. Yeah. And I feel like because, you know, America landed the free, we have every race, every nationality, every religion here, and sometimes it cl- clashes, even part the political parties. Yeah. Like, we have so many different groups, it's hard to keep up. And I feel like you don't, you can't even have, you see how we're having a conversation, yeah. talking about so many different yeah. things. Most people can't even sit this long no. and communicate without an argument or a fight. That's so funny you say that because <laughs> when I started this podcast, right? Mm-hmm. The thing that I learned 
I would say about the human experience, right? Right. Was how, you know, a lot of times at the end of every interview, people, like as soon as we're done, you know, recording, this is it. Thank you for coming. Cut. Everybody will like be like, oh, was that good? Did I do well? Did you, did you know, did I, did I yeah. say what, you, what I should, blah, blah, blah. Everybody it could be like the most, you know, self-confident person to the most conscious person. Everybody has mm-hmm. the same thing. And then I was like, uh, this is a conversation I have with my mom. Cause I was like, if you put every like political person in a room with each other with for an hour, no, like no PR, no manager, no publicist, yes, no press yes, secretary, yes. one-on-one face to face. There would be no like there would be no war there would be no drama it would just be like like this you know what I mean mm-hmm. no beef no one and then another thing no one respects each other you know what's so funny America especially people that live here they talk about diversity 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 so much but then when a person has a different thought and idea mm-hmm. oh we don't want that diversity yeah that is true. Like, we're, we're we're not talking about that yeah but you can't pick and choose when you want to be inclusive and yeah. then it's you only want to be inclusive when someone's saying something that you like. Yeah. And it can't be like no, that. No, I totally agree. You have to be inclusive all around. I you totally have to be agree. Divi- you know, respect diversity all around. Like, you know, um, during the election between Biden and uh-huh. Trump, I have a friend who was a Trump supporter, right? And he was getting so much backlash on social media for supporting Trump. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, excuse me. It was the um, election between Trump and Hillary, okay. not Biden. Excuse me. Um, this is when he first his first term. So my friend was getting so much hate on social media and stuff like that. And I, people used to ask me, "Why are you friends with a Trump supporter?" And I'm like, "Why are you friends with a criminal?" <laughs> Why are you friends with a person that sells drugs? Mm-hmm. Why are you friends with a person that abuses their girlfriend? Yeah. Abuses the, or why a girl abuses her boyfriend? Yeah. You know? Trump? No, yeah. Because I feel a lot of people, <laughs> like, I feel like nowadays people, it's all about, you're not listening to me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep talking. I don't care what you think, and you're going to agree with me. So it's just like two, it's almost like two bullets trying to go at each other. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And, you know, and I remember, I remember he asked me one time, was, I, no, not asked me. I told him, I'm like, you're my friend. Mm-hmm. He's been there. My friend been with me through it all. Mm-hmm. See me at my worst, mm-hmm. right? Just because he has a different thought process than me, I'm not going to be like, oh, you're a Trump supporter, the hell with you. Mm-hmm. No. You know, let's keep it real. There's a lot of stuff that Trump said that people agree with. They just don't agree with how he said it, you know. And I might get flack right now for even saying that, <laughs> disagreeing with some of the stuff he said. But at the same time, I respect my friend who he is as a person. I love him. He loves me. And, you know, we have a respect for each other, you know. And I feel that's very important that's how you know when you have a true friend. Mm-hmm. When you guys can agree and disagree, you argue, you fight, you move on. Yeah. You don't linger. And a lot of people that say they have friends, they really don't have friends. Mm-hmm. You know? I tell people, is this person friends with you because you might know more people or have more followers? Mm-hmm. If you're if they're just your friend for one thing, when something really bad happens, you let me tell you something. You will know who your friends are when you are at your bottom. That is true. That is true. That's that's how you know when you have good friends. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's like one of the things I like about New York. It's like people will put away. You know, people are always busy going, going, like going to where they gotta go. But as soon as you need help, people will stop, help you up. You good? Mm-hmm. All right, let's keep it moving. You know what I mean? Yeah. And how do you, you know, like. In regard, like going back to mental health, like how do you unplug your mind? Because you have so many businesses going on, you have so much to do. You're like in charge of so many things besides having a great relationship with your mother. Do you ever do like, for example, like no phone days? Are you like even able to do that because you're so busy? Like, do you unplug sometimes? Oh, um, I'm glad you asked that. That's one of the main reasons why I wanted to start my own business Mm because you're allowed to do that. Yeah. When you work for someone else. You're on their time. 
You're answering their phone calls, yeah. answering and their you're emails. To, yeah. Expect whatever get coffee or whatever stuff they put you through the ringer. Mm-hmm. That's one of the reasons why I have I started my own business so I can take clients when I want to take mm-hmm. clients. If I want to stop making money, I can stop making money, you know. Um, but you're always going to work hard, harder in the beginning. Yeah. So when you get to that level where you have, you start hiring employees. Yeah. I mean, look what, look what Rihanna did. She was the, was it, the CEO of her company for a very long time. Mm-hmm. She got it started. She don't need to be there every yeah. single day, you know. Yes, she's going to still make the decisions. Yeah. But she let someone else handle, you know. Yeah. She got it to where she needed it to be. Now, the person that, you know, she gave that position to knows her, understand her, understand her how she likes to market her brand, yeah. you know. So, yeah, man, there and you I go. think that's part of being a good leader, knowing when to step down and let somebody else lead, but also, you know, keeping tabs and everything. Do you remember that interview Fat Joe did that he was talking about his entourage, how he had like yeah. 30, 40 people with him, all his friends, and then mm-hmm. he said, he said, and he's like, listen, which I'm gonna like I don't have money anymore so I don't know what you guys want to do and then he said only three of his best friends st- like stayed around They're like don't worry you still our best friend and this shows you how people are like that yeah you know, kind of like what do you call those little things like blood suckers mm-hmm. that like you get on your like when you're hiking <laughs> or whatever yeah. but it is like that and you really got to watch out for yourself because it's a lot of sharks out there it is and god forbid like you know you end up in a conservatorship like it has happened to some yes. very talented nice people um but yeah, so. But and that's another thing I tell people: if you really want to protect your mental health, stay away from mental people. When I say <laughs> mental people, <laughs> I'm so not true. talking about the people that can't help how mm. they were. I'm talking about the, the people, people, the negative, yeah. the people that's always putting you down or everything down. Like nothing is good enough. Or I'm bored. It, this is whack. Let's ex- go. You know exactly. What I mean? The person that's has a, you know how you could just. Like people's energy and the be vibration, off. yeah, you can sense it. Yeah, it's like when that person. Okay, you ever been in a social setting with your friends, right? Y'all all laughing, yeah. And then when a person walk in, like in your like, it's like area, somebody slapped in the back of your neck. It's, it's like, like you feel like the music stopped. It's like every <laughs> 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 like, and then that person just bring an aura, yeah. and you just be like. It's okay, just who, negative who energy. You? But like, it's funny invited? because when you pick that up, I feel like I feel like point one percent of the population of the planet have access to this. And I'm very much like you. Like I can always tell people's energy right away. Mm-hmm. And I like I always tell my friends, like, watch out for shoddy. I'm telling you, I don't know about this one. They're like, No, you're you're just being annoying, you're picking on them, like, no, I'm telling you. And then like a few months later, what I exactly predicted and said about that person's character comes to light and people are like, How did you know that? That's so crazy. I, like you know who told you i was like no i sensed it i told you you know what i mean yeah you know because we're all like vibration we're all like water let's say you know yeah and you feel it it's just like but it's so good to be with people that are like i would say like um having gone through things in life like you have and to have like a optimistic point of view Mm -hmm. because like sometimes i'll be like you know be like out in the city walking around and then everything their mindset is just happy like what a beautiful sunrise today! What a beautiful this! What yeah. A, they, that I don't know. Sometimes I think I'm like, wow, I'm really like, I need to change my you know perspective on life because I'm po- like I'm figuring out all the bad stuff that's yep. happening around. Mm-hmm. But it's always good. I think I think that helps a lot with your, with your like mental health and seeing the positive instead of the negative because it it motivates you and it keeps you to the other thing. Yeah. You know? And then looking back and seeing how much you accomplished so much too. And I'm just thinking, I need this. I need to get to the... Mm-hmm. I think timelines are... I'm very guilty of that. But timelines <laughs> for yeah. me... Like, I live my life around time. Like, this needs to, to happen. This This is my goal. Mm-hmm. This is my plan. And when it doesn't happen, oh, my God, it's, like, heartbreaking. But then learning to, like, okay, what's plan B? Let's go to plan C. You yeah. know what I mean? I think that's the best thing. You know what's so funny? When, when I hear people argue on social media, and I say people, I mean, like, this whole thing on social media now... Man versus woman, what a woman's supposed to be doing, what a man is supposed to be doing. And I'm like, all this, y'all just wasting time. Everyone's common enemy, whether it's man, woman, you know, mm-hmm. trans, uh, so all this stuff that people just fighting each other about, 
the biggest enemy to everyone is time. Mm-hmm. While you guys are wasting time arguing back and forth, you're wasting energy that you can never get back. You're wasting time you can never get back. While y'all sitting there arguing, I'm going to spend as much time with my mom and my yeah. family. And learning, as, yeah. Yes, exactly. While I'm on this earth, I don't want to argue with people. Mm-hmm. I don't want to view no, someone. Like yeah, I don't want to view someone as my enemy unless they, you know, come past my line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like actively invade yeah, your space. Act, yeah, like. That's why I shut down negative people real yeah. early. Like I, like I told, if my friend is having a bad day, go over there with that. Mm-hmm. Don't come over there because mm-hmm. if you want me to, to act like how you, we're gonna have a problem. Yeah. You time out. Yeah. Then when you come back and be my friend again. Yeah. No, that's how I am. Like if I'm having a bad day and I have plans, I'm like, listen, <laughs> I don't want to come ruin today, but this is what's happening. I, yeah. It's better I stay home and chill and take a bath. Cause I don't want to be like the party pooper, you know. Yeah, that's that's how I. Am. Yeah. If I'm If I know I'm not in the mood, and my friends invite me out, sometimes friends they want to be like, if you're having a bad day, come out. You I might. know I hate that. And I'll be like, listen, no, like, yeah. when I tell I need you to I'm be having away a bad people. day. Yeah. I'm really having a bad day. Yeah. I'll be in my apartment, me, yeah, exactly. listening to your max put to the air. <laughs> that's, you really that's want? my bad day. <laughs> like, <laughs> I tell people like. If a person's telling you they have a bad day, yeah. let them have that bad day. Yeah. Because now what ends up happening is if you keep telling people, let it go. Let it yes, eventually it'll gradually happen. Mm-hmm. But throwing in someone's face, let it go, let it go, let it go. That's how people don't get through certain traumas that yeah. happen in their life. Like, you have to let people be emotional. Mm -hmm. You have to sometimes. Like, get it all out. You know, when you're ready to talk, then let's let's talk. Like, when me and my friends get into an argument, I'll be like, well, I'm going to let you have your moment. (laughs) But when you're ready to be my friend and have a civilized conversation, then you know where to find me. Then my friend be like, whatever. And then we're talking, like, the next day. Yeah, I'm like that, too. Yeah. But that's why I tell let let people have their moment. Yeah. You know, if a person's telling you not today, just be like, you know what? I'm not gonna pressure the issue because mm-hmm. I just aggravate people more. I'm gonna let you have that. No, oh, yeah. And people, I think also like reading the room. People are so different. Like I have friends that when they have a bad day, they'll still come out. Like we have like dinner plans, and they'll tell yeah. me how horrible their day. And I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, why are you here? Like I will be home, like you know, <laughs> kicking the air like gently. Mm-hmm. And then like punch in the air. And some people like like that interaction and some people like me don't. You know, we need our alone time. Yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like I recharge my alone time. It's like that saying, I don't I'm not lonely, I like to be alone. You know what I mean? Because yes, people that associate is true. when you wanna like have mm-hmm. two days by yourself that oh you're lonely or you know, you need to go out or blah blah blah. It's like no, I'm ch- like trust me, this is like better than a spot right now. <laughs> you know, like I'm having Exactly. So much fun. Like I, I tell people all the time, um, when people say, like, I'm good being by myself, mm-hmm. stop getting mad at people when they say, oh, I like being alone. They're not saying that they like to be alone yeah. all the time. Yeah. But to them, it's like, if I'm alone, fine. If I'm around people, fine. That's okay. But some people just be so mad and be like, why? That's not the meaning of life. Yeah. That's not this. That's not that. Yeah. And I'm like looking at them But meanwhile, like, they're like in an unhappy marriage with exactly. God knows what's you going see what on. I'm yeah. Saying? Like, it's like hypocritical. Like, that's why when I'll I be looking at all these like diff- other different podcasts yeah. and stuff like that about you I'm pretty sure you see them all the time yeah. now is this big thing where man versus woman right now yeah all over social media mm-hmm. Instagram and I'm just I'll be listening to the what men want from women and what women want from men mm-hmm. and I'm just listening to their conversations like Y'all don't have nothing else better to talk to. Yeah. This is not really an issue, and this is not really a problem. Y'all making it a problem. Yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. I tell people, men, men and women are very different. Mm-hmm. Physically, everything else. If you want to find someone, just be yourself. If they don't want to accept you, fine, move on. But I, I keep telling people the problem is when you're trying to change someone that don't want to change, mm-hmm. you falling on deaf ears. Mm-hmm. 
you have someone that's willing to give you that time yeah so and especially that wants you to be a better person go over there mm-hmm. to that person why i just feel like people just want to be around people that argues all the time mm-hmm. <laughs> like you see what i like i don't know if i'm know explaining if you, yeah. it right but yeah. i don't understand why people invest so much energy into people that's going to make them not be a better them version yeah even with friends like you ever have you ever have a friend right that tells you about yourself mm-hmm. but then you have other friends that saying yeah babe yeah Keep do this up, yeah, yeah yeah do this but you're burnt you end up becoming burnt out with those friends yeah. and then you end up going back to your friend was like see i told you you should never did it yeah but you bash the friend that's so willing to be honest with you and yeah. you have yes ma'ams around you yeah no that's very dangerous because i think that you know, there's a difference between negativity and constructive criticism. And mm-hmm. I feel like people get that confused a lot nowadays, you know? <laughs> exactly. Like, constructive criticism, I love it. Mm-hmm. You know, I never get offended. Like, a lot, of, especially when it comes to art, when people are like, okay, you know, this doesn't look good, work, mm-hmm. work on this. I'm like, oh, my God, thank you. That's amazing. A lot of people get offended. They're like, how dare you criticize me, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But I think that goes, like, in every aspect of life, you know? If they're truly your friend, they want the best for you, they're not going to, you know give you a critique in a neg- negative way to bring you down they're gonna be like you know i would suggest this or why don't you try this yeah. out you know what i mean or it, uh, if your friend is sounding like precious mom <laughs> <laughs> then maybe you gotta get some new friends yeah because, exactly yeah let me but you know what's so funny especially me being a woman i i look at pa- podcasts now mm-hmm. where they tell women guys and girls cannot be friends because mm-hmm. the guy only wants sex from them uh-huh. and I'd be like I can't help it if I'm attractive and that can happen <laughs> with girls too yeah. in this day and age I could have a girlfriend that low key wants to be my girlfriend yeah. not just regular friend my girlfriend yeah. so in this day and age it work both ways mm-hmm. you see what I'm saying yeah. but we focus that's the problem we see women on the small yes, things so exactly. much yeah. they sp- the, exactly like I was, we were talking about how like you know our minds go for like two minutes what mm-hmm. you wish you could do but then it goes back <laughs> to reality and what you can do what you can do but now, but like, I always used to be like, oh, my God, I, I wish I could just, like, grab this person and throw them across the room, right? But now I th- always think, like, myself as an, on a conveyor belt. You know how they have conveyor belts on the factory? Like, yeah. As, and then, like, each section gets something done, and then, then you get, like, thrown in a box, and you're ready for shipment. That's how much time we have on Earth. Like, when you think of yourself as, like, mm-hmm. disposable meat almost, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. we all got, like, what, like, a good 80 years if we're lucky in this planet? You know what I mean? Exactly. That's not a lot. Like, and am they- I really going to... Sp- Mm-hmm. been carrying time about what you think when who cares seriously you know yeah. what i mean just i roll and keep it moving because uh, I, don't, I, I i'm not gonna lie i have more and you know people may although people on in instagram may get like i have more guy friends yeah. than i do girls right and i i see a lot of guys be like oh i bet you if you call them up now they would want to um you know do you yeah. or whatever and i'm like Okay, and I have girlfriends that would want to do the same. <laughs> <laughs> so it is what it is. But one thing I've learned about myself having guy friends, they actually taught me a lot about other men mm-hmm. and to what to look out for. Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't, honestly, I feel like if you don't have a positive father figure, or just a, a positive male figure in your life as a woman, sometimes you do need positive guy that's men that's in your corner telling you the real, real. Mm-hmm. And, and I tell people all the time, like, I felt safe around my male, my guy friends. They never disrespect me, never. And I tell people, maybe it's the type of men that you're around. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah. because my thing is, if you want to sit up there and say, as a woman, I can't have guy friends. That's like you saying everything that women has been saying about men for the do- why they're dogs. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It makes no sense. I know a lot of good men. Yeah. You're reminding me. 
you were on TikTok, right? Yeah. Have you seen that video of that girl that the lady that goes sprinkle, sprinkle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, I see it. She'd be cracking me off. But it's so true, like I think it's so important for people to like look at different perspectives, even if it's something you like even if it's something you don't agree on. But I feel like as human beings, as long as we're not harming each other mm-hmm. or attempting to harm each other, let people live. You know what I mean? Everybody can yeah. have a different perspective. Like I love like when when I moved here from Brazil and people would tell me, Oh, go back to Brazil, blah blah blah, you're immigrant mm-hmm. and belong here. Like I remember I used to get so offended and argue, but then after a while, like you get so desensitized and I remember thinking, Okay, this is we're both young. Like we're young kids in elementary school. Like he, obviously he hears that from somebody. So I remember like early age I used to be like so curious, how do you how like how did you get this point of view? Like who told you this, right? Mm-hmm. So it went it went from like getting angry to being curious and getting angry later. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. A lot of people sometimes would be like, Oh, I heard this, so I seen this. But then when you get to the root bottom, it's just like misinformation. You yeah, know what I mean? Mis- misinformation. Yeah. And a lot of times people people don't even know what they're defending. Like they don't even know. Like when you keep asking questions more and more, they run out of answers, you know? Because I, I feel like people, mm-hmm. sorry to yeah. interrupt, like sometimes humans don't have that much in their life. They just need a problem and they need that mission. You know what I mean? Exactly. And if you figure that out soon enough, then you can just avoid yourself a lot of headache. That's, you know, so fun. Continue to what you said. See, I always tell people like humans, we're animals. Yeah. So being, being, that being said, we could be very tribalistic mm-hmm. in a way yeah. because if you think about it it starts when you start school yeah you know everyone circle is everyone picks a certain clique mm-hmm. that they vibe with mm-hmm. you know not saying the nerves the yeah. jocks yeah like that movie mean girls yeah. like you know <laughs> survival of the fittest yeah, yeah. you know so I always tell people we're tribalistic by nature and, and that's that even goes to where you could have two people that don't like each other, but because they see you as a common enemy, they'll become fake friends. Yeah, to hate on you. Yeah, to yeah. hate on you because they have a common enemy. Yeah. And I tell people all like I tell this to people all the time. And going back to we talked about friendship too. There's a lot of people who are friends and only friends out of convenience. Yeah, that is true. Not have no genuine friendship. Like if you're only calling a friend for for them to do a certain service, then that's not your friend. Yeah. Because real that's friend, a coworker, you basically. see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like. Someone who's my friend better pick up that phone at three o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. if I just have a tummy ache and you're gonna listen yeah. to me have a tummy and complain, ache. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But if they and I, I see this all the time, if someone's just calling you because someone just had a fight mm-hmm. and they only call you for that, that's how you know what type of friend that yeah. you have. If a person's only calling you to do a certain service for them, then that's not a friend. That's no. a friend for convenience. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have genuine friendships with people. Mm-hmm. They have friends who they are just friends with for convenience because mm-hmm. they are afraid to be alone or, yeah. you know, they just have the time where they, yeah, like I said, they just don't want to be alone. But that's one of the major reasons. And that's how you could tell. That's amazing. That's so good that, you know, I think like, I agree with what you said, but I also wish that I knew this sooner, you know? And yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it would have saved mm-hmm. so much headache and time. And what's something, like, if you could go back in time and tell yourself, like, something business-related, like, a, whether it's, like, a business strategy mm-hmm. or, like, the business side of handling your business, what would you tell your younger self, like, if you go back in time just to save you a lot of time and headache and money to be like, hey, you know, read the contracts, read the fine print, you know, protect Ooh, yourself. Um. Hmm. that's a good question and I have to pause for a minute because see me I'm an independent Mm -hmm. and I'm a creator too I used to collab with so many people Mm -hmm. just for the strength of I love what I do business never came to my mind it Mm -hmm. was always a second thought to me yeah it's not until I got into a situation to where I collab with someone right I did the logo, I designed the website and everything, and they was making money off the products that I was desi- oh, designing. Wow. 
and they copyright my work first. Mm -hmm. So that changed everything for me because when I was doing research about that, people don't care if you was the first to create anything. Yeah. People care if you're the one that got legal documentation stating that you own it. Yeah. Basically, if you have the patents. Exactly. Yeah. So I tell anyone that's starting their own business, do not collab. Do not work with people unless you got some documentation stating who owns what, what shares, you know, yeah. goes to what person, what con contracts, you know, because let me tell you something. When money starts to get involved, people change. People change. 100%. People change. And that is like one of the things that I've learned getting into business now. Mm -hmm. Because before I was drawn to draw. Yeah. And you have to watch out for those people who know you're a talent, but you're not educated in the business side. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, when when I drew something, I wasn't thinking about, oh, how can I market this? I should put this on a t shirt and stuff yeah. like that. People would be like, oh, you're a good drawer. Yeah. Right? Ooh, what can I do with that? <laughs> That's wow. what they're thinking. I yeah. could probably make her sign an NDA. Mm -hmm. She could be my in-house designer, graphic mm -hmm. designer. Yeah. She could make all the designs, and I could just slap my name on it yeah. and pay her whatever, whatever, while I'm g getting millions. Yeah. And unfortunately, that, help, that happens a lot. It happens a lot. I yeah. mean, look at the strike that's going on now. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So the writer's strike. It's so sad. And it never dawned on me. It's like, damn, people that work behind the scenes and make these stars, and I'm going to say it, these stars, what they are, without and make these artists sound the way they sound, mm -hmm. these writers and the people that, from the people that hold up the camera, for the people that hold up the lighting, it takes a team. It takes a village, and people it, don't understand that. You see what I'm saying? That. Yeah, like it takes a they, village. Unless they get into the business themselves, or they mm -hmm. start something that has to do with that environment. Exactly. They don't understand how many people are relying on the talent. Like even sh like you know, talk show hosts. You only see the person, but there's almost like 300 people behind the scenes. Exactly. Running no around. Yeah. No. Yeah. Everybody like when they think of the show, they think that person only but they don't understand there's like a screenwriter camera one two three seven you yeah. know a manager publicist somebody that books the guests somebody that does this mm -hmm. you know, somebody in charge of the table like food service table it's like so many people you know yeah and and i guess that's what that strike is all about because it's like i, I would feel some type of way if i'm a writer to a hit show and these executive producers are making so much money mm -hmm. on these films and television series. That's like me getting paid $10,000 for me writing for a hit show yeah. on a major network. And you got someone that just had more money than me, you know, finance the project. Yes, you know, they finance it. They finance my work. But I'm the creator no one will be making money without my thought and creativity and my yeah my yeah. creativity that's a slap in my face <laughs> and i gotta watch this show when i it's go like a home slap in the face and a slap to the back of your yeah. head that's like if i had kids and my kid is coming up to me like mommy i'm hungry and i ain't got money to feed my child but yet i'm watching this show that i wrote mm -hmm win Emmys and this, that, and the third, and I don't have enough money to feed my child. Yeah. I got to tell my child I don't have it. But yet, I'm sitting at home watching a yeah. show that's getting all these awards, all these acknowledgements and everything Ratings like that. Ratings are super high. No, that's tough, tough. Like I will be yeah. pissed. You got to know. That's what I always tell, like, because I get a lot of, and that's going to be the next question, Um, because I get a lot of questions from young artists, and I always tell them, like, when they ask me, I always say, like, know your worth. Know your rights. Mm -hmm. Get the business side of whatever you're doing first in order before you do anything. You know what I mean? As we mentioned, yeah. like have the contracts ready. Register stuff if you need to. Copyright, trademark, do whatever you have. Yeah. And then start doing the business part. Like you have to protect yourself and think of the future. Don't just... Mm -hmm. you know, I, f I know I also feel like a lot of people... I feel like a lot of people that sometimes they grow up in a household with like empathy and sympathy. Mm -hmm. Like we think that everybody's like that. 
You know what I mean? So like you grow up thinking, oh, I'm gonna help this person because that's the right thing to do. I'm gonna do this because it's the right thing to do. But meanwhile, you're you're like in an ocean full of sharks that are looking out for themselves and their and their food for the day. Like they don't care about you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think like for those people as well, you have to relearn life, not to give so much of yourself to people who don't deserve yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's a big like lesson. We sound like we're in Oprah's so- Soulful Sunday right I now. Know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. but you want to know something? Like, I I miss having these conversations. Yeah. I feel like I haven't had a conversation like this in a very long time. Oh, it's been a minute. Because everyone be so uptight oh. now. Yeah. And, and, I'm more, and another thing, too, I'm a very talkative person. Mm-hmm. I felt like nowadays I don't like interacting with people anymore because people can say oh be yourself okay yeah <laughs> i was gonna be myself anyway yeah i was Thanks. gonna be myself anyway yeah. but what ends up happening is i'm myself i'm just you know saying my beliefs and my opinion mm-hmm. but now people want to <laughs> discredit you and assassinate your character as a person overall like people make people make mistakes right and i always tell a person a person acknowledge their mistake and they could say i'm sorry it's like people if you you ever you ever had a friend right that you guys in an argument or not even a friend just an argument in general right you're trying to explain to this person why you're upset and they're just looking at you like you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like they're looking at you like, what did I do? <laughs> yeah, like what are you? Like what are you yeah. talking about? But then they're talking about how they felt in a situation. Mm-hmm. How could you feel something when you came after me first? Yeah, no, I understand. And also, I think like I don't know, but I feel like back in the day, it was so much easier to make friends and talk to people. It was so. And much I feel like easier. nowadays, people are so like shallow, mm-hmm. and not just superficial, but just like. I don't know. I feel like everything is so accessible now that, you know, mm-hmm. even like people like certain friends of mine, like we'll talk. And then like if we're grabbing lunch, they like we just want to talk about like, you know, shallow things day to day. And mm-hmm. if we go too deep, they're like, oh, just call me because or let's just text. Yeah. This is like a, too much thinking, you know. Yeah. Like, that's why traveling, I think, is so important for me because like when, once I leave America and then I come back and I'm, mm-hmm. it's like I adjust myself, you know, it's like normal life is outside. And you think, wow, it's really a bubble. Then you come back, you're like transformed. Yeah. And to add on to what you said, I feel like it was so much easier to make friends because no one was really making a assumption about you before getting to know you. Mm -hmm. If you notice with social media, everyone thinks they know a person. Oh my God. It's like a double sword. You see what I'm saying? It's like me growing up, if I like... If I didn't know you, I'd be like, oh, you know, we have more dialogue. Yeah. Where did you grow up? And yeah. stuff like that. It's like now with social media, people look at you they by how you dress. And you so and they just, yeah. oh, she's a B, yeah. you know, or she looks mean. Yeah. Or there's too many selfies. They yeah, think you're selfish. You like know what I mean? Like you're selfish. You're and, and not even knowing that maybe that's her job yeah. or maybe that's his job mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever the case may be. That's the problem. People think they know people by mm. one interview, yeah. by one photo, yeah. and they're already judging. No, it's like <laughs> everything, like data gets consumed so at a, such a fast rate, mm-hmm. and people don't, don't, like, they don't even listen. Like, say, if they're, they're, they want to understand somebody or an incident that happened. They don't listen to the whole interview. They're just so yeah, ready to don't. bash. They'll give 10 seconds. That's it. That's why people don't make albums anymore. You notice, like, it's just single, 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 break, single, single. Yeah. Because people don't have, like, the attention span. Like, it's, like, mm-hmm. an everyday gets short. Even, like, I noticed lately on TikTok, before people would do, like, a whole story. Yeah. I was, like, this happened. Oh, my God. I can't believe. Boom. Next video. You know? Yep. And, like, and that's another reason. I think Beyonce said something like that one time. Like, she said, no one really... If I can remember, I forgot who was interviewing her. She said, no one does a body of work anymore. Yeah. Like they just do one single, the single becomes high, and then they do another single, mm-hmm. just that and fast fizz- cash. <clears throat> but that actually burns you out more. Yeah. If you really think about it, because see, this is this is why I tell people Beyonce is smart as yeah. hell, right? 
Beyonce saved probably so much money and not that much marketing of the Renaissance. She mm-hmm. put it out. Yeah. Everybody, all her fans was doing the work for yeah. her. Yeah. They she became put the visuals. All that time into yeah. her tour. Yeah. And she made more money probably from her world tour than probably album sales. Not saying that yeah. she wasn't going to make any money yeah. off her album, but she always gives more. Mm-hmm. And that's why she's one of the greatest entertainers of all time. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't care who who who's going to fight me yeah. on that. She's like, what, t- top five? Let, should we do a top five? Yeah, we're going to do a top five. I'm scared we're going to get those Who's comments? your top five? Who's my top like five? Like the greatest real talented people we're talking about. Who, um, you don't have to number by order. You just say like a shuffle oh, just, mix. Just, yeah, oh, okay. Up to you. No, if, you no, want, yeah, if you want number, well, okay, I'm not doing numbers. <laughs> do. uh, I'm just gonna say, yeah. um, okay, is this everyone mix? Yeah, it could like, be your mix. Yeah, doesn't have to be in order. Um, who? As I said, you know how you be sweating. <laughs> like, let yeah. me, let me. Okay, in music, I would say music. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, we have to be yeah, yeah. <laughs> in music. Um. Living today, right? Could be dead or living. Oh, oh, Greatest oh. of all, yeah. So. Okay, then I would say Michael Jackson. Uh-huh. Like I would say Michael Jackson is one of the greatest. Whitney Houston. Mm-hmm. You know what's so funny? I'm gonna say DMX don't get that much credit. credit. But he was so smart and so and talented was, in writing. Like I don't under, I don't think our generation gets how big he was. Because one time I was like looking at his yeah. album sales, like he was pulling in figures like he's like certified diamond yeah, for some exactly. albums. Yeah, so exactly. It's like ten million dollars. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, ten million copies. Yeah, exactly. And then That's another crazy. thing too, I tell people, um, there were times where you know Jay Z album, DMX album came out the same time, and DMX probably sold more than him. I believe. I don't know. Remember what oh, year? I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember what year it was, but, you know, he just don't get that much credit. I would say, yeah, him. You know, mm-hmm. it's just sad when, you know, a lot of rappers, they end up becoming on drugs and stuff yeah. like that. So it kind of halts their creativity. Yeah. But I would have to put him up there because let's keep it real. People play his music and it just gets you amped. Yeah. Like, yeah, what like, you really... Like, was, I think he did Glastonbury like back in the day. Yeah. And that whole crowd knew word for word. W- word for yeah. word. Yeah. This is like pre social media too. So this is like, I think late 90s, I think. Late 90s. I yeah. would, and then another thing, I would have to put Eminem in there. Eminem, okay. I would have to put Eminem in there because let's keep it real. Eminem, <laughs> that last album he did was it Murdered by Madness? Murdered by me, something like that. Oh, I didn't, I didn't check it out. No, but you have Maybe to check out yeah, that yeah. album. Like the, he still got it, man. Like I love, I love Eminem the way he spit, and I love. This is how you know when a rapper is a good rapper. Yeah. You listen to the song all the way through, uh-huh. but then you have to go back multiple times oh, okay. to to even figure out what they say yeah. Nicki Minaj Nicki Minaj will have to go on that list I'm a fine <laughs> period, <laughs> period. <laughs> who is it like, but for me like for me like I think musically like the greatest would be like not in order like mm-hmm. Whitney Michael Mariah 17 oh, yes I mean, the songwriting yes. credits that yes. she has and melodies and stuff mm-hmm. and the voice so we have like Whitney, Mariah, Michael. I would definitely say Beyonce. Yeah, Celine I, Dion. Celine Dion, but I I would also say Aretha Franklin and Patti LaBelle. Yes, that we I do have yeah. to go. Mm-hmm. Like back back to back for me. I think yes. those are the ones. Honestly, I'm I'm more content with 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 the artists you said more yeah. than what I said. But I feel like for a list of new artists, what you said is better. Yeah. 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 Because you like, know, for you, example, like five kids that they will grow up like the first five years with those five. We'll be like, okay, now, now, now here's yeah. Bing Me Up Scotty by Nikki. You know? <laughs> this, this, is Nikki. this is the Bible. This is the vibe. Yeah, and then Blackout by Britney. That's also a banger <laughs> album. Yes. And, whoo, Jesus Christ, you just yeah. want me back. Like, I feel like we went through like a business podcast, 
a, a mental health podcast. Yes. I'm back to business. Now we're like music. <laughs> <laughs> we're like Joe Biden's <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Give me your top five. <laughs> yeah, because that, you know what's so funny? When you could talk about different things, yeah. that means that you've been around yeah. different. That's why I say, that's why I tell people, like, normally people that get mad easily, mm-hmm. when you talk, they can't keep up with you in a in a conversation yeah. because they're not as open they're or never seasoned. was open. Yeah, they're not seasoned. Not seasoned. <laughs> yeah, they don't have. Yeah, they definitely. Yeah. They, they know goya and no adobo. Yeah, like, no Ooh, <laughs> <That's so laughs> because like, do you like for me? I love reading books like the physical copy of books. Like whatever mm-hmm. I do has to be like the physical. I don't yeah. like the electronic unless it's electronic work or music or a podcast. You know, if you can't have it in physical, but like. You remember, like, being a kid, like, getting your little, little allowance money for the week, running to the record store, buying the physical CD, running yes. back, opening the book, looking at every lyrics, reading the thank you, and then listening to the CD. Mm-hmm. Like, it just it just slaps different, as they say. And speaking of, like, talking about going in the past, yeah. I still got my Barbie dolls. No way. I still got Your grandma all keeps them? My, no, it's in my, actually in my car. No way. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Wow. I still got Oh my Barbie dolls! Wow. Back in the day, that's so funny. E- I had, I even have um, uh, two dolls, Barbie dolls from the international collection that they did. Oh wow! Where they have Cleopatra Barbie, no, and then Russian Barbie. Oh wow! Yeah. But if you had <laughs> <laughs> exactly, oh like my God. you know. You should reach out to Christie's. They could do a whole auction. Who knows? Because oh, th- those yeah, go know. up for a high, a high value. Yeah. I even got the, my Spice Girl no dolls. No way. I didn't know they even made those. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, my God. My God, Spice Girls were like. I even got the Spice Girl lollipop that I saved. No way. Yep. That's crazy. I still have. I still got my um, PlayStation 1. Oh, wow. You know, I still have my sidekick. I <laughs> love my sidekick. To, to be honest with you, they need to bring the sidekick back. To, imagine the modern. sidekick. This is what I tell everybody. Imagine the sidekick, the screen, touch screen. You flip it, and you have a physical manual keypad. Mm-hmm. It just hits different. Yes, exactly. Like, and this is this is yeah. your idea. Yeah. So if Please. they do come out with it, oh they better give you a percentage. Because <laughs> if they're bringing back the like the flip phones, you know, but touch screen, exactly. Yeah. The psychic was everything. Oh my gosh. Like the psychic was it. It was like a Blackberry and an iPhone mm-hmm. together. You know? The only phone I wasn't excited about when it came out was the Boost Mobile. Which one? The way you at. The, <laughs> the walkie talkie. Oh my oh. God. I hate it. <laughs> I love the commercials, <gasps> but they're so annoying in real life. It, like, yeah, if yeah you're in it public, was so annoying. Yeah. Like, the walkie talkie one. Because I'll be like, I can't hear you. They'd be like, let your hand go off the button. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. I said, listen, I'm about to oh go get a walkie-talkie. We're going to yeah. be doing all this. Yeah. Like, I had like a Mickey Mouse walkie-talkie. I remember yeah. it was so much fun. I, I think, oh, I remember I bought one. I had the gray one. I was in class, and my cousin was like, where you at, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my, the class was like, I'm like, I mean, I said, yeah. can you hear me? Because like, you couldn't, going in you, and out. could you mute it or put it on vibrate? Like the walkie person, talkie person. I mean, but part. The thing about the Boost mobile phone is like when I when I turn down the volume, you have to make sure you turn down the all the, the way. Yeah, yeah. So I was in class, like, where you at? Oh, I'm wow. like, I'm like, hello. <laughs> no, but those commercials were the bomb. Like it'd be always be like the artist doing something. They'd be like, where you at? Where you at? Like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm over yeah. here. Oh my god, I, I, you know that's why I said. My m- that's why I love that woman. Going back to my mom, like she gave me a childhood. Yeah. And I feel, and also going back to mental health too. That's why I tell parents, the best thing you can do for your child is to make sure they grow up in a setting where they have more likely a chance to not be around so much confrontation yeah to be you know? kids yeah, yeah exactly and that goes into living in a certain neighborhood you know going you know because when you live in a certain neighborhood you got to go to a certain school that's yeah. you know and i understand parents you do the best that you can you know we good but sometimes you do have control over certain things yeah you know um and i just feel like kids are having kids now. Oh my god, babies having babies. Yeah, Didn't babies Tupac have- say that? <laughs> Brenda's got a baby. <laughs> Brenda. <laughs> 
No, it is true. And yeah. we have like a few songs in Brazil, like Funky, that goes like Bebe Teno Bebe. And it's so true, you mm-hmm. know? And it's just like lack of governmental planning and resources because this shouldn't be happening. It's like 2023, you know? Yeah, exactly. But you want to know something? And I may get so much hate from this, but it's the laws that we have in place. They're not mm-hmm. really strict enough. That's why I say, um, like us, America, we are spoiled. We get away with a lot yeah. of stuff. Just like recently, um, when that young lady, African-American girl, went to Dubai, mm-hmm. and we were telling you before the story, you know, she's got arrested and in jail. Yeah. Because my thing is... You live over here, talking any type of way, cursing, yeah, whatever you want, how you screaming. do it, yeah. You can't go to other countries and no. act like that, Mm-mm. unless you have a lawyer and retainer. Exa- to save you. Exactly, you got yeah. the best lawyers in the world. But I hope after that situation, she's gonna learn to where, yeah. And I tell people all this. I tell people this all the time. People go where they feel comfortable. Yeah. Right. People stay in certain environments because they know they can get away with certain things. Because mm-hmm. they know how they talk yeah. and how they act is not going to be tolerated somewhere else. Yeah, that's true. You that's see what true. I'm saying? Yeah. See, me growing up, I had to learn quick. You know, growing up a certain, uh, growing up a certain way. You know, you may talk different because yeah. in Brooklyn we had that, yeah. you know. But when it's time to sign them contracts, especially when me getting into business that I want to be taken seriously, yeah. you're going to have to change your vocabulary. You got to do your, really your corporate quick. talk. Co- yeah. Corporate talk. Yeah, that's what so I'd be like, hi, my name is Shakira. How are you mm-hmm. today? But then when I'm with my friends, I'm like, twerk, hey, girl. Hey, <laughs> Play Dicky. Yeah, so I had to learn how to speak like, informal with my friends because you know when you with your friends you don't complete yeah. sentences you don't even think you, <laughs> you just know, do looks you, you, like, you have yeah. a good friend you can just like talk for a whole hour yeah. just with looks like. but with someone that you don't know you yeah. get so formal and be like yeah. oh no sir no thank you I don't want that yeah. like <laughs> you, it's just that's just how that's how it is like yeah. that that's why I love like being around different cultures and, yeah, and different getting people. out of my comfort zone in your everyday life too everyday life yeah and being around different people, different communities, I know how to interact with everybody, mm-hmm. not just my own people. It's unfortunately you need like that, like uh, we were mm-hmm. talking about earlier. What was it the the Kia and TS Madison podcast yeah. when they got the, the what is it called in English? Gravel. Gra- the gavel. 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 Boom. 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 <laughs> and I and I tell people people that. that's so quick. To come at people, I'm telling you, they're around people that make their ish okay. Yeah. I'm telling you. No, it is true. Yeah, yeah. Because when you grow up in a community where no one respects anyone, then when you go out of your community, you have no respect for no one. Nobody, but yeah. that community may be built on respect. They're going to look at you like you're weird. Are you new here? They're going to think to themselves. Yeah, they're going to be like, uh, you know, we don't use that language yeah. around here. Yeah. And that's or why behavior. I tell people, people stay where they feel comfortable at. Mm-hmm. People like to be around yes people. Yeah. Comfortable, like, yeah. Yeah. But sometimes you may be around the wrong group of people that... <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> You're laughing early. Because <laughs> you, know, well, you know what I'm about I to say. It. Yeah, yeah, like... That's why I. That's one of the reasons why I love my mom. Like, if I smoked a certain way, like my mom would be like, "Yo, um, we mm-hmm. wasn't put some deodorant on, or whatever <laughs> like that." Like, because if you ain't got a friend that be like, "Girl," or like, like take that shit off. That shit yeah. look horrible. No, I think like the worst thing to do to another human being is like to humiliate them or embarrass them. Yeah. And as long as you're not doing that, but you're saying like, you know, this doesn't look good, or try this, mm-hmm. and you're coming from a place of love, even if it's like tough love, I love tough love you know yeah. constructive criticism just i hate wasting time get to the point if you like you like if you don't you don't then i think it's good you know mm-hmm. but like i don't know it's like people nowadays they don't want to think they just want to feel you know what i mean like even yeah. with music like if you listen to certain music today there's no there's no melody there's no rhythm it's just like people going not doing much you know what's so funny is like now everything Okay, I would say this because I feel like in Hollywood and even in the music industry, if you notice, everything got lazy. Mm-hmm. Everything. The music got lazy. 
the movies nowadays, when you go to the theater, is always a live adaptation it's of always a like book a remake of a sequel uh, of a trickle exactly. or whatever. How many times you gonna keep doing Freddy Krueger? Yeah. How many times you gonna keep doing Jason X? How yeah. many times you gonna keep doing the color purple? How many times you gonna keep Fast like, and Furious? <laughs> like you. <laughs> No, why did, did you see that video on TikTok where that yeah. actress was like, "Why are you guys making so many superhero movies? Like it's getting old, guys." Yeah, exactly. But like, you're in a movie, you? exactly. <laughs> but yeah, but you're in a franchise of like of like what? ten so far. It's like ten, yeah. exactly. You're in your own little like literally movie. cars are like flying into space. Like how do you explain? Yeah. That? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's why had, I knew like you had an order. Like, like, oh my god and to be honest with you that's why i missed um was them two older gentlemen that used to cr- critique movies back in the day two older gentlemen um something i think what's his name Edgar? So one of them there's like these two gentlemen that used to critique movies thumbs up thumbs down like on rotten tomatoes um, something like something that, like that? We need we need critics to be brutally honest. You know like, who I miss? John Rivers. Like sometimes you know, like you know, so funny if John Rivers was to talk like how she <laughs> no. <told her>, <laughs> cancel. Get that oh guy one canceled. Oh my god! Like I mean, That's, some things were like, oh my gosh, but it's like that mm-hmm. crazy sense of humor that you don't take it personal and just enjoy it. You know, like Monique. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like there's certain people, you, they cannot get canceled. Like, Monique cannot get canceled, you yeah, know? exactly. Because she comes from a place of love. When you come from a place of love, you can crack as many jokes, and you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. lovingly. It's not bitterness or hatefulness. Yeah. When you joke to humiliate people, then, yeah, you got to go. Yeah, you have to go. Like, you could, like, that's why I say you have to be careful, especially people that, that you're friends, but they're really haters. Yeah, low-key gotta, haters. Those are, like, the most dangerous people to know. Yeah. It's oh. people that's in your sugar that really hates you. Yeah. <laughs> no, those are dang- dangerous. That, They're not a vibe. I, I don't mess with those type of people. But, you know, like I said, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not dealing with that. And that's why I tell people, like, you have to be creative. Mm-hmm. Like what I said before, the music industry got lazy. Because if you think about it, in female rap today, mm-hmm. right, the reason why Nikki has become one of the most successful rappers of all time, you see how I didn't say just female rapper, mm-hmm. because what rapper you know that was rapping back in the day with Nikki that's still rapping now to this day? <laughs> Nobody. I mean, really think you gotta about, think about it. it. Like, you mean like they were in the She's feature still with her? Okay, I would say this, right? Look at all Nicki Minaj vi- videos that she ever done with rappers from back in the day. Are they still rapping now? Mm, Are they still no. as successful? Relevant, no. But that, I mean, the thing, I think she's one of a kind because the come up, mm-hmm. the mixtapes, like selling your mixtapes out of her car she's on still, the highway. Like I said, she's still. That's different come up. Nowadays, you know, you get a, you. Have a million on TikTok. You drop a song. Most times, you, the people aren't even singing. Mm-hmm. They get like a write off on a random singer to sing for themselves. Yeah. So it's very different. Very you know, is- talent. You know, I f- one thing I can't stand like that I I hate is when people come to me like you should try this, look, try that. Like one thing I don't like is bad ideas, bad creative, bad creativity from creative people and mm-hmm. laziness. Like to me, I cannot tolerate it. You know, like, or bad design or bad taste. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, something that's tacky. To me, that's just so, like, unmotivational, you know? You you know what's so funny? I feel like the worst critics of all are people that sometimes have money. Mm-hmm. Because what end up happening is they think just because they rise to fame that their critique is valid. Mm-hmm. Only on the strength of because they have money mm-hmm. or because they are famous. Mm-hmm. I don't like those type of people. I don't. I don't get when people critique something that they haven't done themselves. That doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> exactly. Like, how, how are you gonna? Cr- <laughs> if I'm a rapper, the only people that could are rappers me are people that push their exactly pen and write that raps. Push their pen. Yeah. And that's why sometimes when I look at a lot of these bloggers that talk about, you know, rappers nowadays and who's the better than that, 
let me why don't you become a rapper you yeah. tell me how easy it is but i'm not I gonna like talk about something i have no knowledge once in. you understand certain things in businesses mm -hmm. you can read through the fine line and see what payola is because yeah, there's exactly. a lot of payola going on all the time everywhere even as we speak right now you know what i mean there's mm -hmm. yeah uh, yeah, and I, I like I wait, said. Wait, wait. Can we talk a little bit more about the train group that you founded? Yes. So the most recent business that I'm developing right now um, is in the beginning stages. Terrain Media Group. Uh -huh. So basically, I created this um, business because I noticed that a lot of creatives in like the fashion, beauty, luxury, and lifestyle industry, they have the content, but they don't know where to put it mm -hmm. and where to place it. And, you know, I tell any small business, the most expensive thing in your budget is going to be advertisement and marketing. Yeah. But you can do it at an affordable price that's not going to cost you a lot. Yeah. Because when you... It's okay to start small. And I tell a lot of business that you have a small business. You can't go to a big corporate PR company yeah. they're going to they're going to yeah. charge you like 10,000 and up yeah you know per minute probably <laughs> yeah <laughs> no yeah that's why we say you got to have like a business strategy exactly. and a business plan you know so with terrain media group is basically what it sound like yeah. i have a group of people who i partner with that could better help my clients mm -hmm. talk about you know their brand their product or whatever service that they they provide. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, I help them with their content. So right now, in terms of people in media that I like to partner with is podcasters, mm -hmm. um, people that have their own radio shows, um, influencers, um, you know, and I help match based on what their niche is. You know, so yes, yeah. yeah, so if you're a lifestyle blogger and I know a lifestyle brand, I'm that middleman to connect yeah. them and just produce and create good content, share yeah. each other's content. And the reason why I put the group at the end, not just terrain media, because mm -hmm. it's not just me, yeah, it's a group of us. Yes, it's my business, but I can't do my business without having a strong backing mm -hmm. and and it helps me my client and the person that I'm partnering with because it helps them be able to have you know people guests on their show yeah and stuff like that so it's everything comes full circle so I'm really proud of that you know you should be that's amazing congrats yeah and so basically I mostly focus on the services that I offer for training is um PR mm -hmm. you know and more editorial and influencer mm -hmm. marketing and placement. Then I have media buying is like helping clients with the process of getting a decent pr price to have their you know photo shoot mm -hmm. or talk about their um product in magazines mm -hmm. so that's advertising yeah. paid you know paid media and then um another service that provides content producing mm -hmm. you know if i have my client they want to produce a product you know um or a tv series or whatever i help that sounds so that. cool yeah so you know i'm like the one person stop shop yeah. you know <laughs> you know so that's why i reach out to my partners and mm -hmm. be like hey i have a client you know i have a client mm -hmm. i send my um partners their media kit or any information that i have at the moment on them and then so that way they can yeah, able to get, get their, you know they'd be yeah. like Shakira, they can come on this day interview this day this time and then we all tag yeah. each other and promote yeah, each other's definitely. stuff Definitely, I like that. And then I also sa I saw something on Instagram, Terrain Models. Oh, Can you <laughs> tell us a little bit yes. about that? So Terrain Models is um, a business that I, I started. Realistically, it's underneath Terrain Media Group. It's like group. an umbrella. Yeah. Right? So then, I would say Terrain Media Group is yeah. like the parent, and then I have Terrain Republic, which is just a creative. Like the sister yeah. companies. Yeah, yeah, And then Terrain Models. So with Terrain Models, what I do is mostly I'm a scouter mm -hmm. and um, a mother agent. Mm -hmm. So more model management. Not a model mm -hmm. agency because that's two different things. I really help models build their portfolio so that way they can get into those major, you know, modeling agencies like Elite, 
you know, select Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina Ford, Ford yeah. you know, DNA models yeah. and stuff like that. You know, because like I tell models, you spend so much money dealing with these amateur photographers mm-hmm. and some amateur photographers is good. But at the same time, you really want a good body of work to be able to show them yeah. that. And hey. somebody trustworthy behind yeah. you. And all then, these cams mm-hmm. with, the, oh, let me build your portfolio. Give me 15 grand. You yep. Know? And because I work behind the scenes, I hear what a lot of casting directors yeah. used to stay. When when I used to um, help produce fashion shows, I like mm-hmm. New York Fashion Week, I hear what the casting director says. Yeah, and, what they're looking out oh, for. Oh, you know, her portfolio, her comp card. Is, yeah. Is the, this little stuff that happens behind the scenes that people don't realize, especially with models, Yeah. that... People won't want to work with you based no, on your comp card. No. When, you know, <laughs> like, when I was a kid, I was doing like yeah. TV commercials and we had comp cards. And I remember my first comp card was there was too much information. It was too busy. It was too much. And I remember it was like a Disney commercial and I got turned down for it. But I remember mm-hmm. like having these certain things and, you know, like a commercial portfolio, like a more high fashion port, like pictures, yeah. you know what I mean? Like depending on the customer. But yeah, it's like. It's very complex. Because you ever, because I always tell people, like, you ever seen a model, right? You, the, when you do your model digitals, that's your most natural yeah. form, right? They judge you on that. But sometimes modeling agencies will look at your model digital photos and be like, mm, he can't do high fashion. Mm-hmm. But they're saying that because you have no high fashion photos. Yeah. Either. So they don't know, yeah. you know. No, it's crazy. People exactly. cannot visualize things. Like a lot it's of people too hard in the for world. Them. Yeah. So uh, that's why they always say, you know, go bare face, no makeup, very simple, tank top and jeans, because people want to see what they can do to you as the canvas. Exactly. Do you mind telling us your Instagram and website, please? Oh, God. Um, my Instagram is Shakira Terrain. NYC. Do you mind spelling it for us? So it's S H A K I double R A T O R A I N N Y C. That's it. my personal account. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So my business account is Terrain Media Group, which is my last name, T O T O R A I N Media Group. Mm-hmm. And um, when, when you follow that account, it has all my other businesses attached there. So you can gotcha. just click. So we can just go see. to one and then follow yeah, all the other follow ones. Yeah, Perfect. Else. Same thing for the website? Same thing for the website. Can you just list the website just in case? So it's www.terrainmediagroup.com. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So if anybody's listening right now and they need somebody, a creative director, yes. as talented as she is, yes. please reach out as soon as you can. Reach out, honey. There he is. <laughs> Thank you so much again for being on the podcast. It's been a pleasure. I Thank believe this you. is probably the longest podcast I've done. Almost two hours. Uh, what? I don't know if you can believe it. Almost two hours. Uh, period on that. And hopefully we see each other soon. We can catch up later. I know. That'll be perfect. Yay. Thank you again for being here. You, you know, I always come through for you. Oh, thank you, boo. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye. guys. <laughs> thank you for listening to Tariq Talk. Follow Tariq Talk on all social media channels and check out the video interviews online 